Hello, I'm Erlinda Patterson and welcome to Community Pulse. This is your television program with some exciting subjects that you like to hear about and learn about. Today we have an issue that we all need to learn about and that's diabetes. We have with us a special guest and thank you very much Carol Paris. Hello, thank nice to be so here. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank I'm you. so glad you're here. You're from Arrowhead Regional Medical Center and you're a diabetes nurse educator. Yes. Yes, I've been a diabetes educator for over 15 years. Oh. And that is my specialty. That is my love. I would say that's uh, quite a, a bit of experience there. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, since diabetes is a subject, what is diabetes? Diabetes is a, a problem in the way our bodies um, process carbohydrate-containing foods. And I know carbohydrate is a big word, but we eat them every day. But a lot of people, when they think of the word carbohydrate, they think of bread, pasta, beans, rice, things like that. But no one ever thinks about fruit and milk also. Right. So all of those groups raise your blood sugar. The carbohydrate group is 100% sugar. Fruit, the bread group, and also the um, <laughs> fruit, the bread group, and, um, and the starch group. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Okay, now, are there different types of diabetes? Oh, yes, yes. There are actually, since I work with a, uh, both the pediatric and the adult diabetes specialist at Arrowhead, uh, I've, I've seen many types of diabetes. There are actually 40 types of diabetes. But 40? There are 40, yes. There are, many of them are very obscure and only a specialist in, in the endocrine uh, systems would be really familiar with those. But the main types are, there are three. Uh, type 1, which used to be called juvenile onset diabetes, but now we've just um, gotten rid of all those words and we have type 1, type 2, which used to be called adult onset, but now since diabetes has been changing over the years, we have children that have type 2 diabetes, but they're not adults. So there's also type 2 diabetes, which is 95% of the people with diabetes are type 2. And then there is another type of diabetes uh, that women uh, can, uh, can acquire when they're pregnant, and that is gestational diabetes, oh, type of diabetes that occurs if the, the uh, hormones of pregnancy raise blood sugar. And if the mother's pancreas cannot uh, produce enough insulin to bring, keep the blood sugar at a normal range, then she will develop uh, diabetes during the pregnancy, but normally after the pregnancy, the diabetes goes away. I see. And um, what uh, what actually causes it? I mean, is it something that you inherit from your parents? Is it something that you yourself create by the diet and 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 lack of exercise? Uh, they, they say uh, most most generally most uh, sp uh, specialty people say that a type two di type two diabetes is caused by lack of exercise and poor eating habits, okay? okay? And type 2 diabetes is um, more hereditary, more familial, if you will, but uh, type 1 is not hereditary. Oh, okay. There is, uh, we do have uh, one family that we see, uh, two pediatric patients, a brother and sister. Uh, the 12-year-old has had diabetes for several years and her little brother just got diabetes, but that's very rare. Oh, very rare, okay. mm -hmm. but that see. should happen. How do they treat diabetes? <clears throat> well, it depends on if you have type 1 or you have type 2. Oh, okay. Or gestational. Uh, the type 1 is due to a uh, the pancreas just shutting down and not producing any insulin. So it is important that the patient is only on insulin from the day they are diagnosed. Oh, okay. And they can take anywhere from uh, two to five shots of insulin a day, depending what kind of insulin they're on. And there are many types of insulins also. Okay. Because diabetes, there is not one type of diabetes and not one type of medication is for all types of diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, types of people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but the type two uh, normally are uh, are um, controlled with um, medication, mm -hmm. and uh, and they, and type twos can also be on several 
oral medications and then when they are at their maximum doses as the diabetes progresses then they may also go on insulin but they don't change what type of diabetes they have the type ones will always be type 1 and type 2's will always be type 2 is mm -hmm. that right mm -hmm. okay yes. now um, what are some of the uh, things that happen to a person's body when they have diabetes uh, there's an old myth that I heard what is that there's yeah. lots of them out there well this one old myth was that uh, we go blind, Diabet diabetics go blind. Sometimes they do. And also that their legs will get amputated. Okay. Well, um, I've heard the, the, the myth that pe my m grandmother went on insulin and then she went blind. And they, so, so people uh, correlate the insulin with the going blind. But that's not how it happens because the damage to diabetes goes on from year to year to year to year and it doesn't happen suddenly. So the damage is accumulative. It keeps progressing until then we, because many people go on for years with diabetes and no, have no outward signs of anything wrong, you oh, know. Right. But, uh, but damage is, is being done when your blood sugars are over 180. 180 should be the maximum blood sugar and uh, the damage is being done and, and blindness and the amputations, the, the, um, the damage to your blood vessels just doesn't happen also. Oh. It, it gets worse, you know, year by year, and that's when it gets at a, at a, uh, a bad um, occlusion, a bad blockage, that's when amputations happen. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. Yes. Now, do all diabetics need medication? The patients that I see, uh, most of them, I would say 99.9% .9 do need mm. medication. People who uh, don't need medication, of course, would be a type 2 or a gestational if they are very strict with their eating habits and with their exercise. Mm -hmm. Exercise is a very important component of keeping the blood sugar controlled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not trying to get a free consultation from you, but uh, I have a little scenario where my husband is a diabetic for the last 25 years mm -hmm. and he watches his P's and Q's with his diet. He's very, very strict with his food. He exercises every day about an hour. Mm -hmm. And great. Uh, he does take medication. Mm -hmm. He does take medication. So um, it's more than likely he will not need insulin. Um, I can't say that. Because it, is it usually after so many years, do you require insulin or? Well, well, the, the specialists say that when you are diagnosed with, with diabetes, 50% of your pancreas oh. does not work. Okay. Okay. So your pancreas is already functioning at 50%. So, um, so when the pills no longer work, then insulin is the answer. Right. But many, many of my patients require insulin after 10 years with diabetes. Oh. So he's already been 25, 25 years. years. That is fantastic. Right. But, uh, you know, again, we have to look at life expectancy. And right. if your husband lives to be 90, maybe when he's 85 or 87, he'll have to go on insulin. But right. it's, it's, a, it's a longevity kind of thing. Right. And the bottom line is what is the blood? Blood sugars. What mm -hmm. are the blood sugars? Right. They're mm -hmm. watching that really yeah. closely. Mm -hmm. They're really mm -hmm. watching that really closely. Right. Now, um, people with diabetes have to check their blood sugars, right? Ideally, they would. Uh, type 1s must. It is very dangerous to take a injection of insulin without knowing what your blood sugar is. Uh -huh. Uh, and a lot of people want to say, well, I, I can feel when my blood sugar is 50, or I can feel my blood sugar, I know it's about 150. Uh, but just uh, as part of our, um, sometimes in our, in our clinic on Wednesday mornings, we uh, say, what do you think your blood sugar is? And we'll check it. And they say, oh, I bet it's 250, and it's 47. 
So 47? Th that is very low. Oh, so yes. Anything under 70 is considered low blood They're sugar. They're about to pass out. Yeah, and they don't even know it. So that's the thing that, that everybody who is diagnosed with diabetes gets a, a meter, a blood glucose meter, and the, the strips to check their blood sugar so, so they should use right. it. So the people with insulin have to check their blood sugar before every injection, and some check four to six times a day. And we tell them to check your blood sugar before your insulin shot and whenever you feel strange. It could be something you feel a little dizzy or your vision's a little blurry. Check your blood sugar. So if your blood sugar is in a good range, then you'll know that's not the problem. It might be right. blood pressure or something else causing right. that, those, those symptoms. Right. Okay, but as far as, um, as people with uh, type 2 diabetes, uh, a lot of times uh, I, I would recommend uh, that people check their blood sugar at least two times a day uh, before, before breakfast and then at one other time, maybe after a meal, maybe sometimes at bedtime, sometimes two hours after a meal, sometimes before lunch because your blood sugar can fl is fluctuating minute by minute. And if you never check your blood sugar at lunch, you, you may be very surprised that your blood sugar may be high before lunch and you might not even realize it. Not even realize mm -hmm. it, right? So it's very important. Right. Now, why is it important uh, to talk to your health care provider if you think you have it? If you, um, I've had several patients diagnose themselves because they had a family member that had ha, has diabetes, and they say, "Can I check my? Would you check my blood sugar mm -hmm. on your machine?" Uh, and they check and say, "Doctor, I've got diabetes. I, look, my blood sugar is 250." So, uh, so some patients actually diagnose themselves. But if you think you have it, you know uh, that that again has to do with having health care or not. But again, we have our annual uh, health and safety fair at Arrowhead in. Uh, in October, October 19th this year, where okay. we will check uh, blood sugars, uh, blood pressure, and cholesterol there for you. Mm -hmm. Is there a fee? No, it's free. It's absolutely free to the public, and there's a, it's a huge, big, uh, big uh, fair with approximately 2,000 people attending every year. Wow. Yeah, so we, we'll be. I'll be there checking blood sugars too oh, on great. that day. Yes, great, I will. Great. Uh huh. Great. So again. Uh, Arrowhead Regional Medical Center is always having activities. Yes, uh, in fact, uh, we have uh, we have our serving up healthy classes, and I have a uh, our demonstrations actually is what they are, and they're. Uh, also free to the public and we actually have our dietitian actually preparing a dish oh. and we give samples to the, all the attendees oh. yes and they can sign up on the website and uh, we ha we're actually having one uh, Thursday September 26th from 530 to 7 p.m. in the Oak Room and the November one uh, November is National Diabetes Month so I'll be uh, talking in that one and and the dietitian one will also be cooking for some diabetic friendly um, Menu, um, menus on November 13th, and those are, the, the November is a Wednesday, November 13th, if you want to see me. Oh, well, that'll be great. <laughs> and learn that'll more about great. diabetes. I might take my husband. So. Oh, great, great. Love to, to have you. you speak. Yes, to yes. Hear you speak. Now, um, are there certain types of foods that a diabetic should avoid? Well, the one thing that uh, there is really no room in diabetes is for regular sodas and juices oh, because okay. we use those for the treatment of low blood sugar because mm -hmm. there's so much sugar in there that only four ounces of juice or soda will raise one of these patients that their blood sugar should drop down to 50 will raise them up to between um, uh, 80 and 90 within 15 minutes. Oh. So that's why there's so much sugar. So they absolutely should avoid regular sodas. Again, we would like them to eat the regular fruits, eat the fruit, don't drink the juice, and uh, to um, to uh, watch the um, the saturated fat that would be in meats. Uh -huh. cut, try to cut the fatty part off any pork right. or beef that you're cooking to reduce the fat because diabetes uh, does affect your circulation and actually uh, helps clog up your blood vessels twice as fast as a person that doesn't have diabetes. So that's why the doctors are very strict about uh, getting people on, oh. on cholesterol medication and controlling right, that to right. delay that uh, damage from happening to somebody Be with being diabetes. Being a diabetic, my husband takes the cholesterol medicine mm -hmm. too. Most people do. Okay. I would say 95% of all people with diabetes um, also mm -hmm. take a cholesterol medication right. just as a prevention. Right. My motto is prevention is everything. 
thing. So prevent all those uh, complications from happening right. and you don't have to worry about it. So you do that by controlling your blood sugar and seeing your doctor regularly. Right. Uh -huh. right. Now, our time is almost up. Oh, already? <laughs> yes, it is. I told you it would be fun. It goes by fast. Yes. It goes by fast. Would you please repeat the invitation that we're extending to the public about the event is here that uh, there's uh, November 13th, you're having a diabetic friendly meal. Yes, November 13th, and that mm -hmm. is in the Oak Room. That is located right behind the information desk mm -hmm. off the main lobby, and that is from 5.30 to 7 p.m. Okay. And you should, uh, I think on the internet there is a phone number to call. If you don't have, if you can't register by phone, there is a phone number that uh, that can be handed out and you can just call in your registration for that. Okay. But there's room for about 200 people. So, wow, yeah. yeah. So, it's so a nice also event. you're having the Free Health and Safety Expo on Saturday, October 19th. Mm -hmm. October 19th. And that, that is from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Lots of events out uh -huh. there. To keep everybody busy plus learning more uh, about where you stand with your health and being able to talk to a doctor after you, you complete your screenings. Oh, mm -hmm. I see they have free flu shots also. All right, there's a limited number a of limited those. A limited number, so uh -huh. be there early. Yeah, and, and it's really recommended that everybody with diabetes get a flu shot. Right, yes. right. It's been so interesting speaking to you. Thank you so much for being oh, here today. Thank you. I love, I love talking about what I do. Oh, Thanks it so shows much. all over you. <laughs> thank you. You just glow. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and Arrowhead is lucky to have you. Oh, and thank you. I'm glad you're there for our patients. I'm great. Thank you. All right. All right, Community Pulse. I told you we would be having fun today with Carol Ferris, who is the diabetes nurse educator over at Arrowhead Regional Medical Center. Hopefully you will find the time to take yourself out there to that wonderful event, events I should say. Mm -hmm, a couple of them. A mm -hmm. couple of events that uh, they will be having. All right, I'm Relinda. Until next time, goodbye.